Did you water your plants? Did you water your trees? Uh-huh. Do you forgive me? I still have that feeling. It's like I have no future. Everything's your future. Where is your mother? Do you know that Roy called me and the goddamn rent check is late again? I didn't ask to live here! She's gonna save the world someday. So, weather of the future! <laughs> do, do you get people coming out of the screening going, I, 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 I don't get it, where are the space stations? Where's the <laughs> evil genius blackmailing the Earth with uh, tornadoes? That's funny, no, so far I haven't had that yet. <laughs> but. Talk to me about this idea of doing a carbon neutral shoot because you do make uh, a big point of that in the uh, in the press notes. Right. What 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 was involved with that? Right. Well, I'll just start by clarifying that we were not carbon neutral. Okay. That that would be a pretty ambitious thing to do. But um, we did try to make as many sustainable choices as we could on a low budget. So. Um, that meant everything from just really trying to recycle everything possible. Um, that meant, you know, doing really kind of mundane things like using 100% recycled paper, printing on both sides, um, using fluorescent light bulbs, unplugging things, boring, but, but very sort of tried and true things that people are really starting to do now. Um, and then we did some more kind of exciting things on set, which were um, insisting that everybody use um, like a canteen water bottle, basically, and, and uh, that we were not going to have plastic water bottles on set. And it really worked out. We got little carabiners so people could hook them on and put their names on them. And PAs would run back and forth and refill them with icy cold water. And so that worked out really well. And then one of my favorite things that we did was um, we hired a, a local company in Philly that's just starting up called Philly Compost, and they picked up our food scraps every day and, and composted them. Hmm. So, yeah. you, you lost your Poland spring product placement, though. It's... <laughs> Sadly. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it. I mean, you mentioned um, this, this Philadelphia company that did uh, recycling, and you, this was shot all in the Philadelphia area. area. Um, and well, first off, were, were there any jurisdictional disputes between you and M. Night Shyamalan? Get off my land. <laughs> Get off my territory. No. He's obstreperous, he is. That's my word for the day. Um, but, you know, in, in, in thinking about this whole um, environmental approach to filming, you know, Hollywood seems to have or is getting in sync with it. So I'm presuming they're working up the infrastructure there. I'm not so sure um, about some place like Philadelphia, how much they have. So um, how, how difficult mm -hmm. was it? And by doing what you did, did you help to uh, introduce anything into uh, um, the industry there? Well, actually, um, the city of Philadelphia and, and Mayor Nutter specifically has really been working hard his during his term to introduce a lot of green practices into the city so I think they're one of their goals is to become like one of the greenest cities in America um, so we found a lot of just support and uh, the the Greater Philadelphia Film Office right before we started shooting had come up with a whole a guide, basically, a green guide for film production that was written by a woman that I had kind of worked with in the very beginning of our production in a very grassroots way. We basically started doing a lot of research and putting it on our blog, which is called the um, Future Weather Report. 
and because uh, you know it was kind of new, so we we're like, well, we, we we see how people are, you know, making more sustainable choices in businesses and in homes. Like, how does that translate to a film set? This woman's name is Karen Jared. She's incredibly smart and. Um, very, very environmentally conscious, and she worked as a scenic painter and saw all kinds of toxic practices happen. So, so she was really she's been a part of this movement in Philadelphia. So, it's definitely happening, and it's it's I think it's just going to keep spreading. I think people are, you know, I mean, unless it can unless it gets overly politicized, like <laughs> a lot of good and positive things that'll <laughs> never happen. Then I think it'll just keep becoming more ingrained in people's kind of mainstream practices. Now, this also translates into the story of your film as well. Your protagonist is very concerned with uh, green practices herself. But tell me, how does her concerns in that way translate into the dramatic story of the daughter being abandoned right. by so, the mother? Um, so the main character's name is Laudere. She's 13, and she just lives out in the middle of nowhere with her mom. And her mom's pretty, you know, neglect a neglectful mom. So the kid finds a lot of refuge in nature, and she's really interested in science, which is, you know, very orderly, which is unlike her home life. And when her mom abandons her, she really starts to project um, all of her anxiety about global warming, or all of her anxiety about her abandonment onto this larger issue of global warming, um, which I felt like there's a lot of parallels there. You know, if, if um, you know, we're we're basically abandoning whole generations of of humans if we continue to ignore the situation, and uh, and so I found that this story of of a kid who's been abandoned by her mom had this very similar emotional core to me to that situation. So, um, you know, I started out, it's very much a, a human drama first, and um, if people are able to draw parallels to this larger issue, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, this, this is the other question, is that which takes precedent in this story, the, uh, the environmental themes or the dramatic themes, and how, how did you make sure that oh. you kept your eye on the target there. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I always started out wanting to write a mother-daughter story, so I was very much focused on the relationships and the characters, and I let the kind of environmental and science uh, themes become the the main character's preoccupation, and and her focus versus. Um, making it the center of the film. So in a way we can get a lens uh, to those issues through this character. So I, I really tried to make it about character, focus on character first. Thank you very much for talking with us. Of course, my pleasure. <laughs>